Everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at an accessory for almost any diode laser, at least your typical 400 by 400 millimeter ones. Uh, that is an uh, enclosure. This one is by Scope Fund. Uh, they reached out to me and asked if I'd like to check out their enclosure. Uh, you may have uh, come here and seen my DIY laser enclosure and thought that's great, but I don't have all the tools or the time to build that. Um, how can I do something? Well, we're going to take a look at this enclosure and see what it does, see if it uh, fits the bill, and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. So let's jump right in. The enclosure kit arrived uh, well packed in a box, and all of the individual parts and pieces were bagged or shrink wrapped together uh, with identical parts. They were all labeled with the part letter uh, A, B, C, D, and then the plastic bits as well. Uh, and then there's the foam uh, filter and uh, enclosure cover as well as a, a manual in multiple languages. There's basically four main steps to the assembly. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the build is very straightforward. Uh, no tools required. The uh, metal pipes just slide into all the plastic connector pieces. I did take some time with a white Sharpie to label all the parts just in case I wanted to disassemble and put it back together. It'll be able to, easier to identify everything. And so, that took me a little bit longer, but the whole build really would, could be done, I, I would guess, in five, ten minutes tops. And then once you have the frame assembled, the uh, cover just slides on top, and then there are some Velcro straps to secure it to the frame on the bottom. All right, well, uh, assembling it really didn't take too long. Uh, I did take some time to try to label the parts, just in case they do uh, take it apart and want to put it back together. It'll make it a little bit easier, because uh, some of them are, are similar but different parts. So... Uh, Marking them with a permanent marker. We'll see if it stays. It the 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 plastic parts and such. They kind of have a bit of a shiny surface to them. So I don't know that the uh, markings are going to work. But um, yeah, it's a it's actually fairly good size. Um, let's get a tape measure on this. So we're uh, just under 29 inches wide. It's uh, just about 18 inches tall in the back, and then uh, about 28 inches front to back. This front area is about uh, 14 inches high, so um, plenty of room. Uh, it's, it's actually fairly, fairly large um, for that. Uh, on the side, it does have this this port for uh, the outlet. Um, it is a let's see, it looks more like a three inch. So yeah, it's a uh, about three and a quarter wide, and so if you've got the typical four inch hose you're going to need an adapter. Um, I went ahead and picked one up at Home Depot. Um, let's just see if this fits on here. So um, it kind of fits in the interior so you might be able to tape that on. Um, so this might be a case for a 3D printer um, to make a, a good fitting adapter. That's one thing I'd, I'd like to see them do is instead of these three inch uh, ports put a four inch port. Most of us that are using that as a true exhaust um, that's the size we're going to go with at minimum uh, for for this just to get the uh, enough airflow. So anyway, but uh, it's there. Um, like I said, it's got that little foam filter in there. I'm not sure that that's gonna do much. Now, the front cover does zip open. Uh, and then just flips over. Um, there's this bar in the way, but there's plenty of space top and bottom. So I don't think that's going to be uh, a big issue. Now, um, as far as uh, an enclosure, this is tinted. However, um, I don't think it does anything for actually blocking the light. So this is a little blue laser, got it with some uh, eyeglasses such so that you can see. And so I'll just show you, here's my, uh, here's my pair of free mascot lenses. And so you see we've got the light coming through, but if I put it behind here, it blocks them out. So uh, you can tell they're, they're doing something. Um, and this one is rated at, let's see, it should say on here, 405 nanometers, so it's close uh, to our lasers. But then if you see here, I don't know if you can see that. Let's try to zoom in on this. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, and I don't know if that's showing up on the, the camera, but uh, it's letting all the blue, all that blue light right through. So this isn't gonna do anything really to help your uh, blocking the laser light, so you are still going to want to wear your your glasses very much. <clears throat> One of the features of this laser enclosure is that it is made from a fire-resistant material. 
Now that doesn't mean you should be complacent and walk away from your laser and just let it run. Uh, a small flare up can become a big fire and trust me, this isn't going to contain it. However, being fire resistant, it may prevent a bad situation from becoming worse and give you some time to respond to it. So always think safety, always have, be prepared to deal with flare ups before they become fires. But uh, as far as this fire resistance, I think we need to test it. So I'm gonna take this torch. You see it's not burning through. But we are getting a little bit of smoke coming up through there. So it's not something you're gonna to wanna to trust that it's gonna contain a fire. But it's not gonna, if you do have a fire and you occasionally with these lasers, you will have a flare up. Um, but this is just one of the reasons you want to always monitor your laser. Uh, at most, you're probably gonna have a little flare up around the laser head. Um, and you should have at minimum a little spritzer of water, preferably some sort of uh, fire extinguisher, um, just to put that out right away. And uh, so that doesn't become a bigger problem. But uh, to what they say, you know, this is not going to burn. I mean, I don't see that the, uh, the fabric is damaged in any way. So, you know, good on them for uh, providing a, a material that can deal with a little bit of flame. Okay, so um, now the question is, how do, how do the lasers fit in there? We're gonna go ahead and try a few. Um, but to give some reference here, it looks like we have about a 21 inch opening side to side and about nine inches top. And then up here, you've got about 13. Um, so, you know, sliding them in and out, that's your space you can use. However, I mean, this thing's super light. You can, you know, just tilt it up, slide your laser under there, set it down. So I've got uh, a few dialed lasers. Um, let's see how they fit in. All right, we've got your, uh, your standard that a lot of people have, uh, the Comgro Z1. Uh, this one looks like it should probably slide in here, no problem. Um, front to back and uh, just through there. And yeah, I mean, I've got easily four inches surrounding it side to side and uh, two or three front to back and plenty of Z height. So, you know, if you were gonna use a, a rotary needed to set this up on blocks or feet you've got plenty of room to raise that up quite a ways so you know there's the com grow like i said that easily just can slide in and out there all right we've got the uh per geared laser storm s5 this is very similar to an atom stack laser and so here again this one's narrow but it's starting to get a little tight gotta just kind of slide it side to side get the cables in there our screen that's kind of dangling here but then it does fit in and then here we've got the X tool D1 it's just got the standard feet on it right now um, you could possibly slide it in side to side with it uh, stretching these sides but there again here let's just slide this under push it in sits down on there this one has the stepper motors more on the inside of the case. So, you know, again, we've got a couple inches side to side, inch or two front to back, plenty of room. And again, plenty of room for it to uh, rise up and down. So since this comes ships in a box and fold it up, uh, your top gets a little wrinkled, um, but you can kind of smooth this out. Um, you can just take a heat gun, add a little bit of heat to it, and it should kind of help smooth out those wrinkles. So let's go give that a shot right now too. I kind of just want to keep it moving. Run it around the surface some. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but it did definitely smooth out some of the, the creases and the crinkles and so. Okay, since I got my fan right next to my box, uh, I did have to block it up just a little bit to get it the right height. Um, but we've got it sealed up with electrical tape and so It should just come in from this port here. So we should be able to go ahead and Turn on the fan So that's running And uh, Yeah, you can, uh, you can feel the air moving there. Honestly, I might I just remove this because that's probably restricting the airflow a little bit 
Um, let's go ahead and grab something so we can uh, visualize that. All right, so we've got the fan running, and you can see we are pulling pulling air through there. I definitely feel like, yeah, we get more. It's pulling more with without this in here. So, I mean, if you're exhausting the vents, uh, exhausting the fumes dry outside, I'd probably leave this off. All right, we've got our X tool set up. We've got a layer of uh, quarter inch plywood in there and uh, I've got a Star Wars Aztec uh, calendar uh, medallion that uh, we're going to try to burn. So let's go ahead and close this up. We'll turn the fan on and you kind of see it pulling in. So you know part of this is it does need airflow so if you're worried about the gaps here it, it really does need the gaps to pull air in. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead, put our glasses on before we start the laser up. And we'll hit start. Now I've run this before and so far uh, I know this job actually creates a fair amount of smoke with the, uh, the line engraving. So um, it seems to be doing a pretty good job. I'm not smelling anything outside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the fan off a little bit, see if we can build up some smoke and then uh, see if it extracts it out as well. Hey, we're experimenting, might as well try. I'm actually not smelling anything just yet, so that's great. Um, it does look, I mean, it's really hard to see in, uh, in person, so I imagine it's impossible to see it on video. Um, it is getting a little bit smokier in there, so I, I, I do believe it's kind of containing the smoke and you know it's not not escaping okay now I am okay I am starting to smell just a little bit so let's go ahead and turn the fan back on and uh, see if it goes away so well I'm pretty happy with that test I felt that the enclosure was able to contain the smoke and then the fan was able to move it out uh, I did notice that if I left the fan off, I did start smelling smoke, but nowhere near if this was just left open frame. So definitely uh, is doing its job to enclose it uh, and contain the smoke, and then the fan is able to uh, extract it. I'll leave a link down below for the fan that I'm using in case you're interested and uh, want to get one yourself. Um, one thing I did notice, however, though, is that it is really dark in here. So when you've got the, the black uh, material, it's not going to reflect a lot of light and then you've got that tinted uh, cover as well. Uh, it just makes it kind of dark in there, and so it's nice to be able to see a little bit more what's going on with your job. So I did a little hack. I added some LED lights, and uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that, and um, we'll see if it makes a difference. All right, all I did was to take your typical strip of LED lights. They come with a little connector and I zip tied them and the cable to the frame as you see here just to shine a little light down on the subject and then I've got it powered with just a small 12 volt brick and then we'll go ahead and plug these in and show how much it lights up. All right, and so there you see that bar is lit up. Like I say, I've just got it zip tied in for now. You could uh, stick it on permanently with the adhesive backing, but uh, if you ever want to tear it down, this is going to make it easier. You could add some small Velcro strips as well or something, but I believe that should give us just enough light to uh, have a little more visual reference of what's going on inside the blazer while turning. I hope you enjoyed this video of the Sculpt Fun laser enclosure. I hope uh, it gave you some insight into uh, if it's uh, fit for you. Um, personally, I feel that anyone that is working with a diode laser, that unless you are really working in an open air uh, shop that's got a lot of free-flowing air, uh, air ventilation, uh, you're going to need something like this, whether it's even just in your attached garage and such, you really want to be capturing that smoke and directing it out, uh, especially more importantly if you're working in an indoor shop. Um, even just the, the minor uh, engravings and such create a lot of smoke and debris. Uh, it's not good for your lungs, it, it's not good for your environment. Uh, the smoke can get into various materials around your shop and your home uh, you just want to control that and, and uh, take care of it. So uh, if you don't have the means to have built a custom one like my other video, um, this is a great option. Uh, it, it's uh, lightweight, 
Uh, it's very easy to move around, uh, very quick to assemble. I mean, it took, uh, took me a little bit longer. I was trying to mark them all, and, um, but you know, it assembles in, in five, 10 minutes. And uh, if you need to, you can pack it down. I would recommend probably the labeling those parts if you do that, but um, all in all, I think it is well worth it to help your health, your environmental safety, uh, and just uh, a better experience working with your laser. So uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments for me, go ahead and leave them down below. I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. And uh, stay tuned for future videos on uh, more things workshop. We've been doing a lot of laser stuff lately and there's more to come. So if that interests you, uh, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe. It definitely helps out the channel. And uh, until next time, I hope you get out in your workshop and have some fun.